Hi, good morning. It's Gene from Mavstar Observatory. Um, guys, first of all, almost uh, big thanks uh, to the support that we get from the patrons and, you know, occasionally uh, those people that make those one-off payments on PayPal. Um, you guys knew who you are and uh, I just want to say a big thanks. And also, you know, reading the comments on the last few videos, uh, there's a lot of people that are um, saying that, you know, they're just uh, not in a situation uh, to be able to afford to help support the observatory and you know I understand guys I think we're all in the same boat together you know it's not easy times with this current pandemic around the world uh, a lot of my friends you know are in the same boat uh, I think we all are um, you know they have gone from a great salary uh, virtually to nothing almost benefits uh, so you know my my um advice is don't don't worry if you can't afford to support the observatory we always find a way um, of utilizing what we get uh, to make the most of it like i say i think we had uh, about 35 pounds worth of donations yesterday uh, which is not a great deal when you consider just one of the components on a muon detector comes in around about 118 pound delivered uh, from the united states so you know don't worry if we have to wait a little bit longer uh, before we can get the equipment built then that's just the way it's going to have to be we're going to have to ride out the storm you know just like a lot of people but you know I do understand you know it's hard you know people are losing the homes people are struggling to put food on the table um, what I wanted to just get over in this video was something really important guys um, as we all know watching the news uh, what's been going on in Texas with that uh, Arctic blast that they received knocking out the grid you know and and you know displacing well not displacing but affecting over a hundred million people which is a huge amount of people you know I want to put across something that we've been trying to tell people to do for the last seven years uh, it, and that is just simply get yourselves a bug out bag and it's quite funny reading the comment section on a video I done a couple of days ago uh, I mentioned this get yourself a bug out bag they said where are we going to bug out to the idea is not to leave your property and go out into the woods and start hunter gathering with your bug out bag it's just to utilize some of those items in that bag to make your life a little bit more comfortable that could be um, uh, an emergency accommodation uh, the ability to put some warm food in your family's belly and uh, you know just the simplicity of being able to light a fire you know chop a bit of wood and keep yourselves warm it's just getting back some of them creature comforts that even in a modern city like Texas so many people lost and you know we hear the same thing all the time with these crises come from the people that are experiencing those difficulties we didn't expect this to happen we just never thought this would happen well this is going to become more frequent as we get closer and closer to this pole shift you know the climate is going to shift dramatically and get worse and worse and you know the power grids all around the world are not set up for these climate changes it would cost way too much money for them to do that and we're seeing this green energy uh, become absolutely useless in these situations like I'm talking wind turbines and um, solar panels you know once the snow's over the panel covering that photodielectric it doesn't produce um, electricity <coughs> once the um, ice is built up on the turbine blades on the wind generators you know they can't work and even here in the UK and Scotland, they have had some se severe weather which has stopped these, um, you know, alternative sources of power from working. And in some cases, they've not provided electricity but consumed it because some of the wind turbines we have in this country have heated blades. And even though the blades were heated, the turbines weren't in use. So that it was just consuming electricity as opposed to producing it. So, you know, these things are going to catch us all out at some point and we can all very easily find ourselves caught out by a specific event and all I'm saying is is that if you've got just a few provisions in a bug out bag and maybe three months worth of food 
from the day that that catastrophe strikes you will hit that road running and you will have a parachute for you and your family and you will be the hero of that moment we can't rely on the governments to help us we've seen it so many times the failures of governments to help in situations uh, like the Sinatra uh, tsunami the Chile earthquakes um, other earthquakes that have happened all around the world that has displaced tens of thousands of people at a given no, you know at a given moment this is what we face and it's going to I'm sorry guys it's going to start increasing and you need to be the ones that look after your uni and not rely on the governments because they're not going to be there to help you when you need it as you know a hundred million people in America found out the other day so you know I encourage you if you haven't already to start getting your provisions together because we're going to start seeing these events come up more and more often you know these catastrophes are on the increase and you know I could show you lots of clips of catastrophes displacing thousands and thousands of people um, but you know you only have to do a quick search on Google type in um, floods uh, earthquakes you know could be a multitude of these things but the problem is why it catches us out so much is because we're used to living in this modern world with all the technology and we've become so heavily reliant on it which is a big mistake it's a false security because and it takes something like what happened in uh, Texas the grid to go down and it stops the water pumping stops people say so it's being heated prevents them from cooking their food etc 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 I don't need to go into all the details most of you know but what I'm surprised is is that most people still haven't got themselves a bug out bag and there's a bit of a stigmata about it you know a lot of the time your friends and family laugh for those of you that have got bug out bags they laugh at them in, and you know that moment will come where you know you need these things and you will have them and they will need these things and they won't have them they won't be laughing at that point I guarantee you and if you just um, take this uh, from me that we've not reached equilibrium yet most of the things associated with the pole reversal on this planet is to do with the climate and how it's affecting it and we haven't got to equilibrium yet it's going to get much worse you know these events and natural disasters are going to come more frequently so you know you need to be prepared don't listen to those people who laugh at you collecting a few items to keep your loved ones safe it's the best insurance policy you could possibly have for your family and in most cases you only need to buy it once so if you haven't already start now getting your kits together let's hope none of us have to use them but if the time comes we've got ourselves and our family squared away for at least three months and if it lasted you know the event lasted three months then there's a real you know severe situation there but at least it gives you three months window to then make your secondary provision plans so you know if 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 anything on this video you take away from it is you know you need to start if you haven't already you know I'd like to see in the comments section how many people actually have a bug out bag and how many don't you know we've been doing this eight years and this is what I've been telling people you know this is a solution um, you can have for you and your loved ones uh, you know if faced at that blink of an eye uh, with a catastrophe and there is no reason why all of us shouldn't have these you know we see time and time again on the news floods um, droughts uh, arctic temperatures you know destroying things you know displacing people you know it should be the natural thing to do is have one of these I think a lot of the time um, you know people think that these events are never going to affect them and that's exactly what a lot of these people say after the catastrophe is struck we just didn't expect it or we never envisioned it would be so bad 
but you know why shouldn't it you know at one point come round to us you know it's it's affecting everywhere in this world today why should why do we uh, believe it will never happen to us and why don't we you know make some provisions you know it it's really bizarre you know because we haven't had this technology uh, more than 200 years and we've become so reliant on it you know uh, the skills that people have lost over these last 200 years are the skills that would have kept you alive uh, the hunter gathering techniques nobody teaches this anymore unless you go to uh, scouts when you're younger um, no one shows you how to you know skin a rabbit and cook it or a chicken you know prepare a chicken um, you know if you brought chickens today uh, with the heads and the claws on and all the fur most people would uh, find it too squeamish to pluck all the feathers, gut them, clean them out and get them ready to eat. <coughs> <coughs> but this was common practice 100 years ago. You know, these skills have been lost and, you know, um, people are just too used to going to the supermarket and buying the pack packet food and cooking and eating it. Um, but it's not always going to be the case. And we're being caught out uh, regularly by these catastrophes uh, where it leaves us with nothing. And, you know, these people not only have no provisions, they have no skills as well to look after themselves. So you can see, really, if there was a single global catastrophe that struck, how fast and how many people would perish within just a week or so. And, you know, those people uh, at the same time, uh, before they perished, would be the worst people um, you'd want around you. Because these would be the people that are desperate and they have not got things and they can't provide for themselves. And, you know, uh, I think most of you have saw those two videos. One was done in America, one was done here in the UK, of a grid down scenario. And it was only after a week where, you know, one person had resorted to beating the other guy over the head almost to death uh, with a can of peas that they were fighting over. One tin of food, they were fighting over it and they were prepared to kill each other over it. It should be an eye-opener. But the main thing is, we haven't reached equilibrium yet. The climate is going to continue to get worse and it's going to become more unpredictable and you know the infrastructure that we have just isn't up to the uh, the job of you know working continuously without um, breaking down here in the UK uh, we've had warnings that there could be power cuts because there isn't enough power stations producing the electricity to meet the demands uh, that we've got at the moment and we are one of the seventh richest countries in the world I believe and that puts it in perspective you know everyone is vulnerable and you know I think that puts it in perspective uh, what's happened in Texas in America you know we live in a world that is changing and has been changing for a long time I mean we used to be uh, the pioneers of the industrial revolution you know uh, we had a great empire here in the uk which has uh, fizzled out probably is still there in the shadows but you know we were a lot greater than what we are right now and i was watching the news yesterday uh, i watched sometimes max kaiser and stacy herbert and they were saying that america had just uh, been surpassed by China for productivity output for the first time. And we know why this is. You know, it's, it's the same as what happened there in the UK. You know, we sent most of our uh, manufacturing over to China. America did the same. And, you know, now they are the powerhouse of manufacturing. And if you're making things, you're the ones that are bringing money back to your country. And if you're consuming 
things, then you are the one that is allowing your uh, cash to leave the country. Especially if you know the uh, products that you're buying are coming from China. Uh, this is just uh, the fluidity of you know uh, how things change. Um, you know, on different scales. You know, it's we're not ready. I don't think we're ready for all these changes that are happening right now, and trying to live in a in a pandemic as well, which is taking place, is another thing. You know, uh, it seems that uh, nature is uh, certainly against us at this point in time, and you know, at a time as well where there couldn't be any more people on this planet. I mean, what we're approaching nearly 8 billion people on the planet and we're struggling for resources now. Okay, so guys, I'm gonna leave it here. I'll mention the link down there. Uh, obviously, if you can't afford to, you can't afford to. That's just the way it is. Don't worry about it. Uh, but if you can, you know, the link's down there um, and you wanna help support the observatory please do and I'll say thank you for that and um, you know the only other thing is consider getting yourself a bug out bag if you haven't already and some provisions and I'll say what I usually do you know take care of your loved ones and as always bye for now